Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be looking at rusty paint and chipping mediums. <clears throat> so the postman has been today and he dropped off um, some of these paints here, the rusty coloured ones, and some chipping mediums. So I thought I'd give it a go and turn it into a video. Um, as I worked through my first sort of time using chipping medium um, and some little things I'm going to be trying as well. So what I've got here is some wings, spare wings off a, a wildcat. Um, I've got some brushes and whatnot as well, and the paints here. So these tools here are what I'm going to be using to scratch off the paint once um, once the, the top coat's dried over the chipping medium. I've got a cheap toothbrush, I've got like a scribey type tool for scratching. Um, I've actually got my chipping brush as well. This is like a, a stiff bristled brush, which, which is quite short. I've got some Q-tips. And I've got like a little pipe cleaner type thing. Um, I bought this as an airbrush cleaner, but that would never go down the nozzle. But it still looks like it would be quite good at scratching the surface and working the paint off certain areas. So to start off, I'm going to give um, the plastic a coat of Vallejo Surface Primer. I just like using the grey one. Um, and the reason why I'm going to do this um, is because you're going to be working plastic and off the surface, sorry, paint off the surface, scratching it away. Um, so you want a really good key for the paint to stick to on the surface. So let's start, make sure that's flowing out, which it is. Put a couple of coats on here. I set my airbrush to about 22 to 25 psi. It seems to be a good pressure to work this with. It's got a nice coat on there now. Give it a once over. So the first colour I'm going to be applying is Vallejo 71.080, which is rust. I'm going to give that a good coat all over the area of primed. Let's make sure it's flowing okay. Remember, build it up in small layers. Bit by bit. Thin coats are the key. nice solid opaque layer of this paint all over the surface of this. Good thing with the airbrush, you can uh, blow air out of it, <laughs> it's an airbrush, but you can uh, use it for drying your paint as well between layers. So at the minute I'm not pulling on the nozzle, I'm just pushing down so the air comes out, helping dry the area I've just painted. So that's a nice solid covering of the rust colour on there. We'll just leave that to dry for a moment. So the next colour I'm going to be using is Vallejo 71.129, which is light rust. So this is to give the um, sort of a difference in tone and effect on the rust, because uh, rust is not just one colour. So I'm going to mottle this on using the airbrush. We're not going to give it a solid coat on here. Just we'll build it up bit by bit, random all over the surface right, drive for a second see how we're doing with it Let's 
So just one random pass from a random build of a lighter colour. This shows difference in the age of the rust and different levels of oxidation. Drying it off again. There we go, so we can see two different colours in there. Let's go on to the final colour. So the next colour I'm using is Vallejo 71130, which is orange rust. This is the brightest rust colour we're going to be using for this. Um, what I have actually done is thin this out a little bit. Not because it's too thick, but I'd rather it come out a little bit thinner so it's not as prominent on the model. We can build it up uh, step by step and in more layers to the desired effect that we want. What I'm also going to be doing is using a small amount of Scotch Bright. Um, and I'm going to be placing this over areas on here and actually spraying through it to actually achieve a, a, a more defined mottled effect. So here goes. Just do this bit by bit. As you can see, it's starting to pick up on some areas here. You're getting a speckled rusted pattern on there now. So we'll just build up a few more layers of this. <laughs> Blown away. What we're achieving here is three different layers of colour. They give it a really nice rusted effect. Let's have a good look at that there. I'll include some stills of this, some close-ups, um, to show you the detail and the uh, sort of effects we're getting using these techniques. I think I may just go over it with a bit more light rust in a different orientation. The scotch bright almost disperses the uh, the paint as it goes through it, so it's not a constant stream. It flecks, speckles, creates a nice, like peeling rust effect. Right, so I'm happy with how it's turned out, and now on to the next step. So now we've applied the, uh, the final colours of the rust and it's all dried up. Um, now I'm going to apply a thin layer of gloss varnish. So what I like to do is uh, actually thin it down a touch for the airbrush so you can get more layers on there and generally get a better finish. So apply one layer, blow it dry using the airbrush. Still using uh, pressure about 22 to 25 psi roughly. Pretty much keep it set to that most of the time. That's that layer dry or drying. Apply another layer on now, nice and lightly. Dry it off again. This is going to protect. The, uh, the base coat of the rust colour that we're using um, from when we're actually chipping it. Same as with uh, weathering when using um, washes and you're rubbing them off using thinners. Um, uh, so they could be oil washes using white spirit thinners uh, or mineral thinners, or it could be using acrylic thinners. Um, and any other sort of weathering technique you might use that may damage the, uh, the base coat of paint. We'll give that a little dry. So that's giving a really nice glossy appearance to the um, the paint there. One final coat. 
and that should be enough to protect the base layer of the colour on that. So now we're going to airbrush the uh, chipping medium onto the surface of the rust here. Um, I've had to thin this out a little bit, it's quite a sort of like gelatinous sort of fluid and I've had to up the pressure of the airbrush up to about 4, 35, 40 psi to get it to come out smoothly. So we're going to apply this now. Mm, struggling to come out, seems to be spattering a little bit. Almost gives like an uneven texture. Bear in mind this is the first time I've actually used chipping medium. So that's got a nice cover on there now. And we'll let this dry for about an hour before we continue. And then we'll start applying the uh, the layers of paint to go on top of that. So now I've let this dry for quite a long time and it looks like the chipping medium is completely dry on there. I've mixed up and thinned out uh, some Vallejo model colour uh, medium blue, this is RLM24. Um, I chose this one because it's quite a close match to uh, the blue on my MX-5 and that gets quite rusty so I can compare it to uh, the sills on there and see how accurate this uh, technique is really. Um, so I've chosen this one and I've mixed it up so when it sprays it's going to give quite a, uh, a solid colour on there as you can see on there. So let's lay the paint on now all over the entire rusted area we've done. Nice thin coats, build up in layers. That's better. Oh, try and pick this back up. There we go. Starting to get a solid colour on there, still some of the rust colour showing through, so once this layer is dry, we'll um, apply a bit more. Like I said, we're after a, uh, a very solid blue colour on here. Drying it off again with the airbrush. Um, using this paint again, we're back down to 25 psi roughly. Um, I find that is the uh, sort of optimum spraying pressure for this airbrush, and I thin my paint accordingly. So the sides get a real solid colour on there. Still a few areas near these panel lines where I can still see the rusty colour. So what I'm going to do is change the angle I'm spraying at. We'll try and get the edges of those uh, panel grooves as well. Dry it off once more, see if we need another layer. Almost looks purple on the camera, but... So we've got a completely opaque layer of the uh, medium blue on there now and we'll leave this to dry for a while and we'll come back to it and we'll start chipping. So now the top coat of paint is dried um, I'm going to apply water over the whole area that we painted so I've just got a little tub here this is a soft bristle brush I'm just going to apply this over You can see it already starting to uh, take effect actually. Looks like it doesn't take much to do it. Looks like you could actually uh, get away with using a soft bristle brush with this as well. So what I'm going to do is use the uh, little pipe cleaner thing and I'm going to give this a shot now. So it's absorbing into the, uh, the layer underneath the paint. I'm just going to stipple on here and sort of work it off see the uh, the rust colours underneath showing through now let's 
do an area where there's quite a lot of paint removed. Let's try using the stippling brush as well. So they're starting to expose the rust underneath, it's leaving a really nice effect. Let's dry some of it off. You can use this with uh, a multitude of um, colours underneath, so if you uh, wanted the paint to come off and expose, say, an aluminium, you put aluminium underneath, which doesn't rust. Um, if you wanted to expose a primer colour underneath, you play your primer colour, apply the chipping medium, and then work off your top colour of paint. Um, or if you wanted to even um, express that... Um, a, a, model has had a change of colour scheme so it's been a, a tank that's been in the uh, say Africa theatres um, and has moved to European theatres you could um, apply the desert colours underneath and then uh, apply the chipping medium to the whole model or just in certain areas <clears throat> then apply your um, the camouflage scheme uh, for the other theatre then work it away and you can see the uh, exposed paint underneath as well Actually, just use me a uh, finger with a glove on as well. I'm starting to peel the paint back as well. Let's try using a uh, a scribe type thing for more of a scratch. Okay, that's going a bit deep. That's probably a bit too sharp actually. Um, got an old toothbrush here. Well, it's a new toothbrush, but. Uh, Doing that quite heavy across there, and that's exposing a lot of the paint. This probably seems to be uh, the best thing to use. It seems to cover a large area a bit more randomly as well. So brushing across the entire area with painted now, bit by bit. So change direction as well. So it doesn't look so uniform. Okay, that's leaving some quite nice effects. Some of the paint actually looks like it's blistering a little bit where the chipping medium sort of soaked up the water but hasn't actually removed itself. So it looks like it's blistering underneath, particularly in this area here. I'm quite pleased with that, it seems to work quite well. I'm going to get the brushes cleaned up and then I'll do some close up shots of this. So I'm actually really pleased with how this has turned out. It's, um, it's given some really nice effects on here. Uh, as you can see, it's blistered some of the paint, so it looks like the paint hasn't come off, but the rust is pushing up off the surface. And the areas where the uh, the chipper medium has removed the paint is random, it doesn't look too uniform, um, and looks generally quite realistic. Um, so yeah, I'm really pleased how this has gone, and I'm going to keep trialling different things with this over the next couple of days, couple of weeks, um, and posting up you know, what I find. I'm going to try layering it up, um, with two different layers, so a primer coat and then a, a coat on top and then rust at the very bottom of it as well. Um, so stay tuned for all that and thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy the video I hope it's useful as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you soon.